Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing of the NVIDIA Shield. Now this is a portable Android gaming console priced at $299.99, originally slated for $350, however NVIDIA decided to lower the price due to customer feedback. They also suffered a one month delay in getting this product to the market because of a manufacturing issue. But that aside, many will liken the design, which you see right now in action on that front graphic, to an Xbox 360 controller adorned with a 5 inch LCD, but I can assure you it is quite a bit more than that. So let's start off with what you're getting for the $300. This device is powered by NVIDIA's own quad-core Tegra 4 processor, and that in itself alone pretty much puts the hardware, of course the balance of the components round out the package, at the same level as what you'd find in a $500 tablet. This quad-core processor is supported by 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of internal storage. That's the only internal storage option currently. You also have that 5-inch display, which you just saw in the front of the box, which has a resolution of 1280 by 720. It is a multi-touch display, integrated stereo speakers, dual-band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 3.0, a mini HDMI for video output beyond the wireless streaming capabilities of this device, micro USB 2.0, a micro SD card slot for storage expansion, and finally a 3.5mm headphone jack. And this is all powered, uh, also, or I should say running, on Jelly Bean 4.3 out of the box, I believe. So really, this is as close to a Nexus device as you're going to get, not only in terms of uh, the partnership between NVIDIA and Google, because that is very strong, has been since the beginning, but also uh, the price point and hardware really remind me of what the Nexus experience and the product line is all about. Even though this is coming from NVIDIA, it still is very, very reminiscent of a Nexus-like device. So, uh, before I get it out of the box, or as I get it out of the box, one thing I want to point out is that Many people will argue that even though the Android marketplace has uh, 700,000 applications, there isn't a whole lot in the way of gaming. And uh, many people will argue there's quite a bit more when it comes to Apple. I would make the argument that any real gamer knows that um, both mobile platforms are simply crap when it comes to real gaming. But a device like this brings the promise of changing that trend and really redefining our expectations for what we get out of mobile platforms. So, let me get this open. I didn't realize this was the main tab that I still had to deal with, but pretty obvious consider considering it's labeled as open with an arrow. Wanted to make sure I had it right side up for you guys. And here we go. Out comes... The top half, this is protective uh, insulation for the shield, and there it is. Uh, and a lot of plastic, as we find with uh, most tablets, for those of you who follow my channel and watch my reviews. Now, the shield is a pound and a half, so it is relatively weighty, but considering uh, what it's comprised of, I'm not surprised, personally, because after all, when you think about all of those parts of a tablet, uh, being crammed into a much smaller, more dense form factor, having to add a screen, as NVIDIA has done, it's still very impressive at its weight. And I think that many will argue it isn't very portable because of its weight, but uh, I'm going to be uh, contrary on that, because to me, the ability to have all this in this package is unlike anything we've ever seen before. Let me get the rest of this plastic off of here. So uh, that, to me is the key difference between the Shield and arguably, you know, people saying, why don't I just pick up an Android tablet and get a controller? Well, the integration won't be as good. It's not as seamless. You don't have it all in one package. Uh, pairing is always going to be relatively clumsy, and that's relatively important. I also think that NVIDIA has done a really nice job with this controller. Uh, you can see right here, uh, it does look a lot like the Xbox 360 controller, and that, quite frankly, is a good thing. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, the 360 controller is the best in the business, so why wouldn't people be happy if you're really a gamer to see that uh, make its way onto the Shield? I also want to point out one of the most intriguing features of the Shield, which I haven't mentioned through the course of this, isn't its ability to be an Android console, but more so to stream all of your games, at least not right now, it's only in a beta phase, but it does work with Steam, you're able to stream your games directly to the Shield, play them on here, or if you want, stream them onto another display in your house, uh, anywhere on your local, ne uh, local network essentially, and play them using the Shield while displaying them, as I just mentioned, on your uh, monitor of choice, whether it's a TV, 
or another computer monitor, whatever it is, essentially breaking down the walls traditionally associated with PC gaming. And while that may seem trivial to many of you out there, the reality is that then you weren't the, the actual customer that NVIDIA was designing this for. On the other hand, those of you that this appeals to, I know you are blown away with the entire concept, let alone um, wanting to see whether or not the execution is there, as am I. Uh, you do need to have an NVIDIA uh, 650 or higher GPU. Keep that in mind. If you do not have that card or higher, you will not be able to stream gaming uh, wirelessly from your PC, as I just mentioned, which in my opinion is the most compelling feature of this device. The Android gaming console thing, really secondary, even though that may be the primary marketing. So two analog sticks, a D-pad, um, traditional buttons, an actual NVIDIA button, much like the Xbox 360 home button, a start button, an actual physical home button. The NVIDIA button will take you to NVIDIA's own uh, store for the Shield, as well as, um, I believe, will always bring you back to that uh, home screen, I should say, which is a, an alternative home screen to the traditional Android experience that's offered here. Volume control, uh, if I flip the actual device around, to show you guys the uh, ports that I mentioned earlier, you can see we've got all of the things you would find in an Android tablet. In fact, maybe more. Uh, the three and a half millimeter headphone jack I mentioned before, micro USB, which yes, you can use an on-the-go cable for host capability. Um, you know, you've, you could hook up a hard drive, a whole host of different things, get it host, and then an HDMI output. Uh, so that's certainly good in the event that you're not able to stream wirelessly. I do also think a lot of development is going to be done for this device since it is relatively open. Some ventilation right there because after all this is a very um, powerful device and it does require some cooling. And your micro SD card slot is right there. We've got some triggers, uh, bumpers, basically everything you'd expect from a console controller. Also some ventilation here on the front, right? That grill that's sandwiched in between the, the Shield and NVIDIA logo that is just more cooling for the entire system. So I really think that NVIDIA has thought this out well despite a lot of early criticism. A lot of people think it's going to be a complete flop. I do think it is a difficult sell considering it's essentially a $500 Android tablet stuffed into uh, a console quality controller with a, an attached screen, but I don't think that takes away from the game-changing capability, and I'm not trying to be cute with the game-changing there, but that, that really is the truth. As I mentioned before, I am hopeful that this will take uh, mobile gaming to another level, something we haven't seen from the actual console makers, and that's why NVIDIA, I think, got uh, involved with this. Some argue it's because they're not in the next gen of consoles. Well, I also want to point out the Shield is capable of outputting 4K. That's something that the brand new Xbox One cannot do. So that's pretty interesting considering this is a mobile device priced at $300. So I'm expecting uh, the usual applicable paperwork in here that we would get with any product. We have a registration and warranty piece of paperwork here. And then this is what appears to be a poster. Um, just marketing that essentially, I guess, shows the shield and all of its buttons. Not going to open this up right now. We have our micro USB cable for charging, which is accompanied by the typical wall adapter that comes with just about every mobile device these days. And that is pretty much it. I don't believe there's anything else in the box. Going to close it up. By the way, they definitely went the distance on packaging. It's been a long, long time since I've seen a manufacturer really try to impressively pack a product and do so. And it's clear they spent quite a bit on this, not only on the internals, uh, and the actual design, because remember, they had to build this from the ground up. For all those out there that want to criticize this, it's, it did take engineering and R&D and quite a bit of money. So I'm hoping that we see some nice development. This also, by the way, makes a great control for Parrot drones, supposedly uh, triples the control distance, as well as giving you an actual controller. So that's another unique, interesting device. Certainly a compelling product, whether or not it will be well-received, uh, we will have to wait and see, but overall, I'm excited to finally have the Shield in my possession and share it with all of you. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.